Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. And in this one, I'll show you how I make this wonderful, delicious stuffed crust pizza from start to finish. Starting with how I make the dough and the tomato sauce and how I stuff the crust and bake the finished pizza. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll begin by making the dough and as usual test that your yeast is alive and well. So to the lukewarm water I'll add a teaspoon of sugar and mix it until it's dissolved. Next I'll add the dry yeast. I'm using active dry yeast but you can use instant if you wish and if you're using fresh yeast you'll need 25 grams. Now I'll mix that until that's all dissolved. OK, now I'll set that aside until it activates. And this is how it should look after 10 minutes. If yours hasn't foamed up after 10 minutes, it must be dead and needs replacing. Mine's nice and healthy, so on with the recipe. And once again, because of my wonky hand, I'll have to make the dough in my machine. But you can easily knead this dough by hand if you wish. First, add the yeast mixture to the mixer bowl, followed by the vegetable oil. In a separate bowl, mix the salt with the flour. And now you can add the flour to the mixer bowl too. Now for those hand kneading the dough, add everything to a mixer bowl, mix it all together thoroughly till you have a sticky mass, then turn it out onto the bench and hand knead for 10 minutes. It might feel a little sticky at first on your hands, but that'll soon pass and you'll end up with a nice smooth dough. Right, back to the machine. OK, using the dough hook, I'm ready to go. Mix on the slowest speed until it all comes together. Now I'm making enough pizza dough for three large 12 inch pizzas, but I'll be freezing two of them. More about that a little later. Now stop the machine and scrape down the sides of the bowl if you wish. Now set your timer and knead for 10 minutes. And it's also 10 minutes if you knead them by hand. And this is what it looks like after five minutes. And after ten minutes your dough should be nice and smooth. To proof the dough in you need to grease a large bowl with a little oil. Turn the dough out onto a non-floured surface and form the dough into a ball. Use the surface tension of the bench to stretch the outer skin of the dough as shown. Once that's done, add the dough ball to the greased bowl. Coat it with a little of the oil that's in the bowl. Cover the bowl and I like to use a shower cap for this. These are available in the website shop if you want one. And allow it to proof for one hour. Now I like to use my oven with just the light bulb on to do this. OK, that's the timer set for one hour. OK, that's the proofing time up. And as you can see, it's well risen and sticking to the shower cap a bit. 
And if that happens to you, just lift it slowly until it releases from the inner plastic lining. And now I'll turn it out onto the worktop once again and knock it back. That simply means push all of the gas out of it. Once that's done, I'll form it into a ball. Right, if your measurements were correct at the start, your dough should weigh around 1.04 kilograms, or just over 36 ounces. Now I need to divide that into three pieces, which gives me 345 grams, that's just over 12 ounces each. Once divided, I'll form each piece into a ball. Now two of these will be coated in a little oil placed in plastic food bags and frozen for future pizzas. As we only have one of these large pizzas every five to six weeks, this will save me from making the dough again in the future. And I'll do the same when it comes to the tomato sauce. Now for the one I'm making today, I've placed this dough ball into a lightly oiled container to proof for 45 minutes. And while that's proofing, I'll move over to the stove and start making the tomato sauce for these delicious pizzas. And this basic pizza slash pasta sauce couldn't be easier. I'll start by adding the olive oil to a hot pan. Once the oil's hot, I'll add the finely chopped onion. Fry the onions for three or four minutes until they soften. Next ingredient is the finely chopped clove of garlic. Next, add the two dried herbs, the oregano and basil. Now add a whole 400 gram can of chopped tomatoes. Don't forget to rinse the tin with a little cold water. There's nothing wrong with buying the pre-made pizza sauce in jars, but it's always best if you can make your own. Not only does it taste better, it's cheaper and you know exactly what's in it. Next add the half teaspoon of salt. Bring the sauce to a slow boil and simmer for five minutes. Finally, and this is optional, add a handful of chopped fresh basil leaves and mix those in. And that's all there is to it. Now put the lid on, take it off the heat and let it cool. And like the dough, this is enough for my three large pizzas. I'll use a third today and freeze the rest for the other two pizzas. Right, on to putting this beautiful pizza together. And this is the size of the one I'll be making and it's going to be a 12 incher. To stuff the crust, I'll be using a combination of these pepperoni sticks and thin strips of mozzarella cheese. And I'll prepare those now. It'll all become clearer a little later. Now these pepperoni sticks are a little firm and won't bend very easily, so I split mine down the middle and cut them in half. But the mozzarella strips are cut from this very cheap block of mozzarella. And if you can't find this type of mozzarella, you can always use a mild cheddar cheese for stuffing the crust. And as part of the topping, I'll also be adding some thin slices of this delicious homemade tikka and lime flavoured chicken breast. Okay, apart from the dough and the sauce, I haven't included any of the pizza topping ingredients. It's entirely up to you how you construct your pizza and what toppings you want to use. But if you use the same ingredients that I have, you won't be disappointed. OK, the proofing time is up, so I'll start to put it all together. Now flatten out the door and start to tease it out into a rough circle as shown. The gluten strands are pretty strong at this point, so there's little chance of tearing. Just take it a little at a time and go slowly. Once you get it so far, you need the pizza pan to guide it the rest of the way. You also need to raise the pizza pan so the edges of the pan are off the bench. 
and I use a flan dish for this as shown with this non-slip matting under and on top of it but a couple of damp dishcloths will do the same job. Now with your pizza pan on top place the dough in the middle of the pan and start gently pulling it out towards the edge. If the dough starts to tighten up just let it relax for 5 minutes and it will become supple and pliant again. When you're done you'll need to have about an inch overhang all the way around. Now start with your pepperoni sticks and place them all around the edge, round side pointing out. Ok so far so good, now place your cheese strips all around the edge too. Once everything's in place, carefully pull the overhanging door over the top as shown. And that's it, that's how you stuff your crust. <laughs> It'll be interesting to find out what you stuff your crust with in the comments. Now get your tomato sauce and spread a thin layer all over the base of the pizza. Don't overdo the sauce or it may make the base soggy after baking. Three of the tablespoons I'm using here in the video is just about enough. And the rest I'll split into two and freeze it for my two future pizzas. Right that's it, ready for the topping. And believe me that was harder to explain than it is to actually do. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 230 degrees Celsius, that's 445 Fahrenheit or gas mark 8. Ok time to build up the topping on this delicious pizza. Now this is how I do mine, no doubt you'll have your own way and ingredients of making yours and I hope you share yours in the comments. Now I start with a good layer of grated mozzarella. If you're in the UK you can get these 250 gram bags at the supermarket beginning with a capital T and they're really cheap. I normally end up using about 400 grams in total for this 12 inch pizza which is about a bag and a half. Next I'll add a good layer of my tikka and lime chicken breast. Don't forget this is what we like to use on our topping but you can use whatever you like. And this is where I like to put a good thick layer of that grated mozzarella again. And like I said, we only have one of these every six weeks, so we like to pile on the cheese. A few very thinly sliced onions. And next I place my pizza pepperoni slices all over the surface. And finally I like to finish off with a few baby plum tomato halves scattered all around. And that's it, time to go into the hot oven. To make sure the bottom is baked properly I also use the bottom element in my oven. Right I'll set the timer for 12 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. Ok time's up and it looks fantastic and it smells even better. By the way I also turned on the top element in my oven for the last 3 minutes. Right first job is to get it off the pizza pan and onto the cutting board. No problems there. Next I like to give the crust a good coat of my homemade garlic and chilli oil. Mm. 
Now this is new and this is the first time I'm using it. It's a 12 inch pizza cutting knife. And <laughs> this could go wrong. But it actually works really well. I'll leave a link in the description for it. And there it is, a delicious large 12 inch pizza entirely made at home. And you can imagine, it tastes absolutely fantastic. And I hope you can see that fantastic stuffed crust, it really works well. And as you can see, the bottom is pretty well baked. You'll never get it as dark and crispy as you would in a proper pizza oven. Domestic ovens simply don't have the heat, but it's a very close second. And I can't resist another bite. <laughs> this was supposed to be our evening meal. I don't think there's going to be any left. Mm. Definitely a big thumbs up for this one, folks. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Edmund Roberts, Colin R, David from Massachusetts, John Fishwick, Tommy B, Amy Thompson, Kenneth Hunter, Martin Stanley, Rebecca Lindley, Kate Bartolome, and John Graddon. And there's one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.